بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹی تھری آن دا سبجیکٹ آف کمپیوٹر آرگنائزیشن اینڈ اسمبلی لینگویج پروگرامنگ دس لیکچر از اے کنٹینیویشن آف دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ دا ٹائٹل از فنکشن ان اسمبلی لینگویج پارٹ ٹو دس لائٹ شوز ٹوڈیز ایجنڈا وچ ول اسٹارٹ ود اے کوئک ری کیپ آف پریویس سیشن Then we will discuss uh, how different operating systems allow x86-64 assembly programmers to pass and return values to and from functions along with the demonstration of some running example programs. Well dear students, we already know as how to display a string on standard output and today we will understand as how we can display a single digit decimal number as well as a multi-digit decimal number on screen. We will close uh, today's session with a demonstration of uh, uh, writing a multi-file assembly program. Okay, so let's have a, a quick recap of last lecture. Well, dear students, we all know that a procedure in assembly language and a function or method in high level language is a named piece of code that can be called from a program. And in NESM, we can define a procedure with a label in the beginning and a ret instruction at the end, as shown over here in the uh, print message function, as well as uh, in the main function as well. Well, to call a function, we use the call instruction, followed by uh, the function name which is a label in case of NESM, which performs uh, two tasks. First, save the return address, that is the address of the next instruction on the stack, and then perform an unconditional jump to the first instruction of, of the function. And finally, uh, the right instruction pop the saved address, return address from the stack and place it inside the RIP register. And this shifts the control of execution back to the next instruction after the call instruction. I hope the calling and returning from an assembly procedure is clear to you all. And uh, this slide summarizes the concept of the caller saved and the Kali saved registers, which we have discussed in detail in our previous session. Okay, dear students, today we move ahead and uh, see how different operating systems allow x86-64 assembly programmers uh, to pass and return values from functions. Well, a function may have uh, arguments or parameters, which might be integer or floating point values as well as addresses pointing to data. And this enables a function to operate on different data with each call. Uh, dear students, other than parameters, most functions have a return value, which is commonly an indicator of success or failure. In the 16 and 32-bit days, since there were only eight general purpose registers, therefore all the arguments were passed by the caller to the callee by pushing the arguments on the stack. On x86-64, Linux, Solaris and Mac OS use a function call protocol called System 5 AMD64 ABI application binary interface in which first six integer parameters are passed via registers and first eight floating point parameters via XMM0 to XMM7 registers and the remaining on the runtime stack. And this is shown over here. The first six parameters via these registers and if there are more than six parameters to a function then they are pushed on the stack. Similarly on x86-64 Microsoft Windows use MSX64 calling convention in which first four integer parameters instead of six 
are passed via resistors and first four floating point parameters via XMM0 to XMM3 resistors and rest on the runtime stack and this is shown over here as well. In Microsoft Windows only the four parameters are passed via these resistors and if a function has more than four parameters they are pushed on the stack. Well dear students both Linux as well as Microsoft Windows use RAX register to return integer values and XMM0 register to return a floating point value. Let us first understand how a function returns some value to its color. Well dear students, uh, the famous main function is called by the underscore start function which contains the startup code for the C runtime environment. Before calling the main function, it do some stuff other than populating the uh, arg c and arg v as per the command line arguments passed. And finally, a function can return to its caller using either the ret statement, ret assembly instruction or uh, the exit system call as shown over here. Let us now move on to the Linux terminal and see our demonstration of this on the terminal. Let me show you the program that I have just uh, displayed on the slide. This is the program. Here I have placed the uh, return value uh, decimal 54 inside the RAX register before calling the RAT instruction inside this uh, main function. And we can achieve the same functionality using the exit system call as well. Okay, let me assemble this. Nessum iPhone um, FELF 64 proc 1.0 Nessum. And let me link it GCC proc 1.0 dot form slash a dot out. Let's execute it and let's check the return value eco dollar question mark and that is 54. Well, this uh, dollar question mark is a special uh, shell environment variable that contains the exit status of the last executed shell command. Great. So let's fall back to slides. Okay, dear students, uh, now we have a fair idea as to how an assembly program or assembly function uh, returns a value to its caller. It is time to understand as to how we can pass arguments to, to an assembly function. Well, consider this assembly program having two functions. Main, that is called by the C runtime environment. Uh, that is why I have uh, declared it with the global keyword over here. And another function named sum of three, that is called from uh, within this source file over here. Therefore, I have not declared it uh, global. Anyways, uh, well, the sum of uh, three function computes the sum of uh, three integer values passed to it and finally return the result. Okay, so dear students, before calling uh, a function, that is in case uh, over here, sum of three, I have placed the three arguments inside RDI, RSI and RDX registers as per the system five application binary interface. Although we can use other registers as well, uh, but I think uh, it is better to follow the standard. Well, this call instruction uh, will save the return address and shift the control uh, to the first instruction of uh, this function sum of three. And of course, over here, all the x86-64 registers are available to us. But uh, being a programmer, we know the three arguments to be added are inside uh, RDI, RSI and RDX registers. Uh, over here we have added them and have placed the result inside the RAX register before calling this RET instruction. Which will of course shift the control to the next instruction uh, after the call. And finally over here, uh, we know that the result is already there in the RAX register. Uh, so this main function is uh, simply executing the RAT instruction, thus returning the sum of uh, uh, these three numbers to the shell program. 
and uh, inside the shell program of course we can uh, access the result inside the dollar question mark variable i hope uh, this makes sense to you all well dear students uh, one uh, more important point is that the c uh, exit status and bash return value both cover the range 0 to 255 uh, so you cannot return a value greater than 255 so we cannot keep a value greater than 255 inside rax and expect this ret instruction to return that uh, moreover bash uses a uh, code 127 for command not found and uh, from 128 to 255 for different signals uh, so one must uh, use the return value in the range of 0 to uh, 1 to 6. Uh, we will soon learn to display numeric values on the screen. Uh, then we will of course not uh, uh, keep our result inside the exit status or RAX register, uh, which is of course a bad programming practice. Well, this is another program. Uh, that uh, that counts the number of one bits in a 64-bit data value uh, well the data value is uh, placed inside the rdi register before making the call to the function named count once uh, over here well since uh, this is a 64-bit number and we want to run a loop 64 times uh, to check every bit whether it contains one or not so I have initialized uh, this RCX as a loop counter with uh, a value of 64, which will of course be uh, decremented by this loop instruction. And since I want to store the result in RAX register, uh, so I'm using XOR instruction to zero out its uh, contents if there is any. And uh, over here inside the loop, first we are moving the contents of RDI register to RSI register and uh, after that I am uh, uh, doing a bitwise AND of this RSI contents with 1 which will of course test the least significant bit of RSI register if it is 1 then a 1 will be placed inside RI, RSI and if uh, the least significant bit is 0 then after this AND instruction, a 0 will be placed inside RSI. Then we simply add this RSI inside the contents of RAX, which is already uh, zeroed out. And for the first time, uh, if the least significant bit is 1, then this RAX will contain a 1. And then uh, this shift instruction do all the magic. Uh, this shift instruction performs a shift arithmetic write to the contents of RDI by one before we repeat the same loop or same logic uh, 63 more times finally this code will repeat for 64 times and uh, we'll check out all the bits which are one and in case of a one bit we will add that one inside the rax register and once this loop breaks uh, the rax register will of course contain the count or uh, sum of one bits inside uh, this register value which is passed to this function okay so once we fall back to this uh, main function over here uh, once this count once function has been called and returned we have the result inside the rax register of course uh, which will be returned to the bash shell okay my dear students once we will assemble and link this program and execute it uh, the number of ones inside uh, uh, this 64-bit data value will be there inside uh, this environment variable uh, dollar question mark now can anyone tell me what will be there inside this uh, dollar question mark variable uh, yes of course the number of one bits over here can anyone calculate it yes it is 24 f means 4, f means 4 bits, f means 4 bits, f means 4 bits and this 8 is actually uh, 1, this 4 is also 1 and if you count all these 1 inside the binary representation of this x value you will get a 24, that is great. 
Well, dear students, the code for uh, these sample programs are available on our course pit packet repository. Uh, please do make time, download and execute them to confirm what I have uh, said on the slides. Okay, so now uh, uh, let us write down a function uh, that displays a single digit decimal number on the screen. A single decimal digit ranging from 0 to 9. And this is the code that will perform the job. Well, the name of the function that will uh, perform this task is print digit. Well, it is assumed that uh, uh, a single digit is inside the RDI register. And uh, of course, in the lowest byte of the 64-bit RDI register, lowest byte is uh, DIL. So uh, before calling the print digit function, uh, the digit 0 to 9 is placed inside RDA. So I have placed 7 over here. Uh, well, if uh, we simply print this 7 on screen, uh, dear students, the ASCII character corresponding to the ASCII code 7 will be displayed. Therefore, the first instruction of this print digit function increases the value of RDI register by 48 by 48 which over here inside uh, this table you can see that this 48 is the ASCII of uh, uh, digit 0. So this uh, 7 uh, plus 48 becomes uh, 55 and uh, that is the ASCII uh, of uh, uh, the digit 7. So now once we will uh, display this 55 on screen uh, 7 will be displayed over there. Well, uh, dear students, note that we have uh, in the data section uh, defined a byte type variable named str having two bytes initialized with a zero and a new line character having ASCII of decimal 10 or hex A. Over here, uh, the lower byte of RDI register that is DIL. Uh, is moved to the first byte of uh, uh, this variable str uh, containing 0 and the second byte containing the new line character is not affected. So after this uh, move instruction the str variable will have a 55 in the first byte and of course a 10 which is the new line character in the second byte. So uh, 55 uh, being ASCII code of uh, digit 7 and 10 being the ASCII code of new line character are now there inside this str. And now uh, these are the standard 5 lines of code that will display the 2 bytes of uh, memory contents pointed to by str on uh, standard output uh, using the uh, write system call having the uh, id of 1. And this uh, ret instruction will return the control to uh, the next instruction after the uh, call instruction over here. And this is the code to make the exit system call to uh, terminate the program. Great. Let us now move on to the terminal to see our demonstration of uh, this program. Let me clear the screen first. Let me show you the program proc. Uh, 4.nsm I think okay so this is the same program you can see uh, this call to the print digit function this is the print digit function and over here we have placed a 7 inside RDI uh, so a 7 will be displayed on screen and let me assemble it uh, nsm hyphen felf 64 proc 4.nsm let me link it, uh, proc 4.0, oops, uh, fine, uh, GCC actually by default do dynamic linking and uh, to avoid this error, uh, we can instruct GCC to do a static linking instead. Let me put a static flag over here, now the executable is created, let me execute the program and this time we have successfully printed a 
digit 7 on screen. Uh, well, dear students, uh, now a hundred dollar question that will of course come in your mind and that is what if we want to display an integer suppose 2021 on screen that is having more than uh, one digit. Uh, well, this can be done uh, by repeatedly dividing this number by 10 and getting the remainder and the remainder you get uh, first should be printed last. This is important. So we divide this number by 10 and we get uh, the quotient of uh, 202 and of course the remainder is in this case 1. So uh, this is what the logic is. Uh, let me show you a code that uh, do this job. Uh, okay, proc5.nism. <coughs> uh, well, uh, uh, this code has been taken from uh, uh, this location. Uh, I have not written it myself. However, it is quite simple to understand. The logic is the same which we have uh, discussed before. Uh, this is the print unsigned int. This is a function. And it assumed that uh, uh, the number you want to print is there inside RDI, the only argument to this function. And right now I have placed 2021 in it. Well, this uh, function uh, prints only the unsigned integer and it expects a 64 bit unsigned number. And it expects the number inside RDI. Okay, so uh, uh, do go through the uh, code. This is available on the Bitbucket repository. Let me uh, assemble this program. Nesm hyphen F E L F sixty four rock five dot Nesm. Let me do the linking using the static option of gcc proc 5.0 and let me execute dot for slash a dot out great let me change this program proc 5.nesm and uh, let me write something else over here So this is quite a big number, but I assume that this is this can be accommodated inside uh, the 64-bit register. Let me repeat the process of assembling, of linking, and let me execute it. So great. So this is working. So far, so good. Uh, let me fall back to the slides. Okay. So uh, this was before closing today's session. Let me quickly describe as how as how we can uh, distribute our source assembly programs in in multiple files. Uh, consider this assembly source file uh, which is uh, using or uh, calling two assembly functions uh, sum of three and uh, print unsigned int which we have already discussed and written in today's session. However, uh, you do not see the definition of these two functions over here in this file proc 6 dot mesm. Uh, when you uh, will try to assemble uh, this file uh, uh, using uh, this command, it will successfully assemble uh, by generating the proc 6 dot o file, the object file. This is because I have used uh, the external directive over here telling the assembler that uh, these two labels sum of 3 and print unsigned int uh, are external to this file and are defined in some other file as global and it will be the job of the linker later on to resolve them. So the .o file will successfully be created. And this is uh, another assembly source file. Uh, which only contains the uh, definition of these two uh, functions. Uh, sum of three, the code is here. I have not written it uh, over here on the slides. 
and the print unsigned int the code is over here uh, moreover note that I have uh, uh, used the global uh, directive over here to uh, declare these two functions so that they can be called from uh, another module and of course uh, we can always create uh, the object file of this source file by using this command so after these two uh, commands are executed we have two dot o files the next task is to link and we can simply use this gcc command to link these two object files into this executable myxe and once we execute this my executable of course uh, these three values are passed to the sum of three function which will return 2021 and then we will place that 2021 inside rdi and we call print unsigned end and of course this will uh, return the string and we'll print that and we get this value so that is great well just friends i hope you will be able to download these assembly files and do the assembling and linking uh, i strongly recommend that you should uh, write different utility functions and uh, uh, place them uh, inside uh, uh, this my functions dot nesm file and uh, whenever you want to use any of these functions in your program uh, just declare them with the external keyword and call them last but not the least uh, do not forget to link your program uh, with the object file that is my functions dot o uh, so that is all for today's session i hope it was informative for you all if you have liked it please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends I wish you all the best, happy learning and Allah Hafiz.